today, I have a wonderful story for you. It is a story of triumph and tragedy, the story of a legendary mountaineer, Herman Buell. Buell was a sensitive child. It is strange to think that the sensitive child would be the one to nab one of the most impressive first ascents in the history of high peaks in the Himalayas. He barely talked, he was very shy, until he discovered the sport of climbing. He excelled in this sport, so much so that he was drafted by the Austrian government into the Alpine Regiment because of his unique set of skills. After being returned from being captured by the Americans, Buell returned to his training as a mountain guide, where he set his sights on the 8,000er, Nanga Parbat. Nanga Parbat was a very deadly mountain. 31 people had died at a prior attempting the peak. Buell wanted to be the first person to get to the top. Upping the ante of the ascent further, he refused to use oxygen on the, on the peak, preferring to do it in a lighter, faster alpine style. He also deserted his climbing partner at Camp 5 because his partner was too slow. So Buell continued on to the summit. He made it there, but somehow managed to lose his crampon and his ice axe on the summit of the peak. He then continued down with one crampon, and he found himself weathered out overnight. So he lashed himself to the side of a very steep slope and stayed there, descending in the morning back to Camp 5 safe and sound. This t whole ordeal took him in total 41 hours. To try and get somewhere close to the feet that his first mountain had been, he then, he then set his sights on the 8,000 or broad peak. He and a climbing partner ascended it in a fast, light alpine style, as was becoming customary for Buell, and they summited no big issues on this one. Done with the 8,000 or game, Buell set his sights on a 7 or Kuglossia. However, this would tragically be his final mountain. Uh, he and his group set out in Buell's, in Buell's expected fast, light alpine style. They... Buell never summited, as far as I could tell. He, there are two conflicting reports of his death. He either walked off a cornice in a snowstorm or was trying to descend something, a face in a snowstorm, and the anchor broke while he was rappelling and he fell to his death. I'll leave you today with this quote from Buell. There is probably nothing finer than to climb free and uncovered by equipment, reveling in the gymnastic upward movement. Like Prisus or Dulfer before you, relying only upon yourself, keeping a sharp eye on things, feeling the rock beneath your feet and fingertips. This has been a mantra for many climbers before and after Buell, and it will continue to be a mantra in the future.